everyone, how you doing today? My name's Eric. I really appreciate you stopping by to check out my video today. On this episode of Smoking, I'm going to show you how to make sous vide cilantro and lime beef fajitas. Now, I've already did a video for chicken fajitas uh, via the sous vide. I'll leave a link below. It came out great, but I definitely prefer beef over chicken when it comes to fajitas. I have just over two pounds of uh, flat meat, they call it. You could use skirt steak or uh, flank steak. Uh, and then I have an assortment of vegetables, some uh, onions, uh, some peppers, some limes, some cilantro, and then basic seasonings. I got salt, pepper, I got a little bit of cumin, a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper. And then I also got some cilantro lime seasoning that I saw at the store. I thought I'd sprinkle a little bit of that in there too. So. Stick around, I'm gonna show you how to make this step by step. Let's get cooking. All right, the first thing I did is to chop everything up. I chopped up some peppers and some onions, as you can see. And then I also chopped up the meat. I cut the meat into, against the grain, into around uh, three quarter inch long, uh, inch wide strips. Now you don't have to cut it before you cook it. I am because I'm trying to save time. I'm just going to throw it into a hot pan to grill on each side when I'm done. Now some people like to finish this on a very hot grill, literally 30-40 seconds each side. This meat is so thin you don't want to overcook it. So if you're going to finish it on a grill, by all means, leave the whole piece together and then slice it after the fact. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to make the marinade that we're going to soak uh, the meat in and cook the meat in in the sous vide bath. So we're going to start off with around a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Need a little bit of oil in your marinade. I have around four, four garlic cloves here that have been minced. Love garlic. Now I got two limes that I cut in half and squeezed all the juice. So the, the juice from two limes. Okay. Then I have around four tablespoons, maybe five tablespoons of chopped cilantro. You don't have to chop it really fine. This is just for the marinade. Okay, now we're going to do some dry ingredients here. I have some cumin right here, two teaspoons of cumin. That's a nice flavor. For a little bit of heat, I got one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Next, I got one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper. I kind of mixed it together in the same dish since I didn't have an extra dish. And now I got uh, a couple tablespoons of this cilantro and lime seasoning. Uh, you don't have to use this. This basically has uh, some red pepper flakes, green pepper, a little bit of salt, and some other spices. But you know what? I am making cilantro and lime beef fajitas, and this spice is cilantro and lime. I figure, you know what? I might as well. It certainly is not going to hurt it. So now we're just going to mix this up real good. Get it into a nice paste. And uh, let me get the meat into a bag. You can either uh, use a food saver bag. I don't think it's really necessary. We're only going to cook this meat for a couple hours. So if you just want to use a regular freezer bag, by all means, now use for a regular the freezer beef, bag. Now for all we're going to do, take some kind of container or have someone help you. Oops. I just put it in here because it can stay open. And now I'm going to pour this delicious marinade that I made on top. And we're going to squish it around real good, get the pieces of meat coated real well. And then I'm going to heat up my sous vide machine and this is going to go in the bath for around two hours. So once you get it in the bag, just kind of massage it around. Just make sure the bag is, is sealed. Just kind of move it around. Try to get all the pieces coated as best you can. So there you go. Just make sure every piece looks as uh, well coated as possible. Don't be too concerned because once it gets in the sous vide, uh, it starts cooking, everything will kind of come together as well. So I'm going to do this with the air displacement. I'm going to put it in a bag, seal up the bag, just leave one open, one end open and kind of squeeze all that air out. And when we submerge it under water, we'll make sure to get it airtight. So 
That's it. I'm going to heat up my sous vide machine. We'll be back in a minute. All right, so here we are. My sous vide just got uh, heated up to temperature, 132 degrees. Now, one thing I noticed, I try to put the vegetables in the Ziploc freezer bag into the water. And because it wasn't vacuum sealed, I had, it was impossible to get it submerged. It just kept popping up because the vegetables are so light. So I went ahead and vacuum sealed the vegetables. Uh, if you don't have a vacuum sealer, I would recommend maybe putting something heavy in the bag that's not going to rip uh, the bag like a knife or something. Maybe some spoons or something heavy to weigh it down. I just thought it would be easier just to seal all the vegetables in. So. Hopefully this won't give me the same problem. Nope, that sinks right down. Beautiful, just what I want. And I'm not going to seal the meat because I'm just going to put the meat, it's still floating a little bit. I'm going to put the meat on top. Let's uh, do the air displacement. Let me open up one end and we'll uh, squeeze the air out of this as we submerge it. There we go. Now, the vegetables aren't going to be fully cooked at 132 degrees, even for a couple hours. So, uh, for vegetables, I typically recommend around 180 to 185 for 30 to 45 minutes. So, some people, that's perfect, I'm just using something to weigh it down. Some people like to uh, cook the vegetables at 180 degrees for a half hour, 45 minutes, and then turn the sous vide machine down to 135, 132, whatever it is they're going to cook it at, and then add the meat. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to cook both for two hours at 132 degrees because I figure I'm going to finish it off in a, in a hot uh, stove, so uh, in a frying pan. So I'm going to kind of like heat up the vegetables separately until they're the correct tenderness, and then I'll throw the meat on and cook that and mix it all together. So to me, this is a little bit more simplistic because it all goes into the same bath. But of course, you guys can experiment if you want to do your vegetables separately by all means. So that's it, 132 degrees. I'm going to get the timer going here. And we'll, uh, let's see, so let's go for two hours. That's what I love about sous vide. Now the machine's going to do all the work. I don't have to do anything till it's done. Just fry it up in the frying pan for a few minutes. Get some tortillas. I'm gonna make some delicious fajitas a little bit later on. I'll be back shortly with my son. He's gonna do a um, root beer uh, review and I'm gonna do a beer review. So we'll be back in a second. Here we are, beverage review time. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this. Elysian Bifrost Winter Ale. It's a brewery out of uh, Oregon, I believe. Let me see, 8.3% alcohol. Yeah, no, Seattle, Washington, I'm sorry. So I'm looking forward to that. And my son Kyle, say, say hi, Kyle. Whoops. Hi. Oh, I'll fix it. There we go. Uh, my friend Kyle is going to be trying. He's a root beer lover. And this one says it's the granddaddy of all root beers made with cane sugar. Sioux City Sarsaparilla. Woo! So... This Let's is the see. last of the four pack he got in Vegas, just if you guys are wondering. This is the last of the four pack I got in Vegas. We, originally, if you haven't seen our other videos, if you haven't, welcome to the channel. But if you have, we have had um, three other videos. We've had one where we did um, a pear soda, a gummy... No, it's green apple, isn't it? Or, no, it was a pear one, I think. Yeah, it's a pear. Okay. It was a pear... Um, Jelly bean soda. I started doing sodas because we hit three million five hundred subscribers. Or three million. Three. Thirty-five hundred. Three foul. I don't know how many. <laughs> I forgot. I watched. All yeah, we were just. He was just doing root beer reviews. We did. Um, but we ran out of root beers because we. I'm doing so many videos that we had to start trying different kinds of soda. Then we did. Um. We did um, that Montana Sourhead Lake, whatever it was, that cherry one. Yeah. We did a Virgil's Cream Soda, and if you're watching Virgil's, good job at what you do. <laughs> and then we're doing this one. All right. As always, guys, cheers. I appreciate you watching my video. Okay, Kyle. Okay. We'll take a smell first, see what, how it smells like. Oh, it smells good. This doesn't really smell like anything. Probably the best smelling. Very, like very weak uh, profile. Maybe a little bit of hops. All right, here we go. Cheers. Thanks for being in my video. Oh, wow. 
All right, you tell me first. How's it taste? How do I explain it? Is it better than wow. Virgil's root beer? That one's your, been your favorite so far. I would say Virgil's is really good. I wouldn't say I could pick between these two, but Maybe. yeah, this is really good. Really good? All right. Mine, very hoppy. Tastes a little bit of fruit, maybe tangerine. It's not too strong. The beer. fruit flavor kind of mellows out the hoppiness. Oh, but it is good. Mm -mm. <laughs> God, I all right. I think I think you got it all. Nothing else is going to come out. So there you go. Let's enjoy our beers. <laughs> Let's enjoy our beers, or I should say sarsaparilla. I don't know, I guess sarsaparilla is just another name for root beer? Yeah. Because it says sarsaparilla, and then it says the father of all root beer. So, cheers it again. It is basically root beer. It is? So, always, guys, again, I appreciate you watching me, uh, my video. We got uh, around an hour and 50 minutes left. Let the sous vide do its thing. I'm going to enjoy my beer. Kyle's going to enjoy his sarsaparilla. And we'll be back shortly when this is ready to come out. We'll saute it up and we'll have some delicious beef fajitas. Until then, cheers. Bye. One more time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So here we are. I took out the vegetables. There was a lot of liquid, so make sure you drain that because you don't want it too, uh, you know, liquidy. I put a few tablespoons of oil. And we're just going to saute these for a few minutes until they get nice and crispy. And then we'll add the beef. Alright, so it's been a couple minutes. I'm sprinkling some of this uh, cilantro lime seasoning on there. Stir it up real good. Just going to give it a couple more minutes and then we're going to add the beef. Alright, so after you've had it uh, sautéing for a few minutes, maybe four or five minutes, this looks about done. Try to move all the vegetables over on one side and we're going to add the beef, the steak. Just like this. And here we go. Here's this delicious steak you can see. So nice and uh, kind of medium rare on the inside. We're not going to go crazy here. Just a couple minutes and we're done. We don't want to overcook this. Oh man, this just smell wonderful. Whew. All right. I'm going to give it around 30-40 seconds before I start stirring it. We'll be back shortly. Alright, this is just about done. We'll get the family out here. We'll uh, sample it on camera. Be right back. Alright, here we are. We're going to make a beef fajita burrito. We got the tortilla there. I always like to put the cheese close to the edge so that it folds over really well. So I would say just like, maybe like that. She's and my hands are clean, by the way. <laughs> she's better at this than I am, that's for okay, sure. So I'm going to take, try to get the juices out of it too when I lift it. Get a little more meat for my keto man. Now, of course, you can put salsa, you can put, uh, where I'm definitely putting cheese and sour cream on it, but uh, yeah, whatever, Crema, guacamole. Uh, some of that, what do they call it, cotija cheese, the oh, crumbly yeah, the cheese. cheese. Mm -hmm. Should I make it really full for you? You wanted a nice full burrito? Yeah, make a good beefy burrito. We'll now, go. another thing is you don't want to um, over fill the burrito. It's easy to do that when you're putting all your toppings in because then you can't roll it up very well. So this is probably about as full as you really want it to be. So let's just oh, there add you a, go. a little, little extra cheese. More That's cheese. always good. We'll put a dollop, as he would say, a dollop. That's the dollop. Chicago sound. A dollop of sour cream. sour cream. There we go. Okay, a couple dollops. 
We can't and do I hope I didn't just that. mess that That looks like too much. It's going to be a challenge, but I'm up for a good challenge. <laughs> Let's see. So you want to just make sure. This is an art form. See that? You just want to roll it nicely. Even if your hands get a little messy. You get a job down in Tijuana. <laughs> you could. <clears throat> oh, no. See, I messed that one up. Oh. They'd fire me. Okay. So we go like this. We go like this and roll it. Then we'll go ahead and take a knife what? and we'll give it a good cross cut here. And there we go. Okay, yeah, let me wow, looks good. Let's try that. All right, here we are, ready to try that burrito. You ready? I'm ready. My wife, Monica. I'll take this one. Ooh. I'm take sorry, it. it's falling apart. No, it's fine. I just wrap it a little tighter. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's good, that marinade. Mm -hmm. It's definitely got a little bit of a kick to it, too. Mm. Yeah, that's for sure. If you don't like too zippy, you don't want to go too crazy on the cayenne. Yeah, well, it's, it is a little hot, but boy, it it's tastes perfect. good. I, I think, like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, as always, guys, I appreciate watching my video. Wow, this is really good and really easy. If you like what you see, please hit the like button. Check out my uh, website up above, ericsmokerbarbecue.com. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Thumbs up for the old man. <laughs> <What is it? laughs> Bye.